Good morning. All are welcome here as we gather for worship on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its color was like the color of gum resin. The people went around and gathered it, ground it in mills or beat it in mortars, then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna would fall with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And say to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have wailed in the hearing of the Lord, saying, If only we had meat to eat, surely it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not only one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him, saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, The people I am with number 600,000 on foot, and you say, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month? Are there enough flocks and herds to slaughter for them? Are there enough fish in the sea to catch for them? The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. 
and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Hello, friends. It's Psalm 19 this week, and I want to teach you a Hebrew word right away. Are you up for this? Okay, good, good. The word is Torah. Torah. Say it with me. Torah. Yeah, in English it's sometimes translated as law or precept or commandments. Those are all okay, but as Christians, we might be at a disadvantage to understand what that means to the people of Israel and to the psalmists. It really meant God's whole way of living, God's whole instruction for our lives, which is a wonderful blessing. If we read it only as law, commandment, as things we're supposed to do right, we're, we're going to miss the spirit of the, the, the rich sense of blessing that Torah is. Psalm 19 is about God's Torah present with us, God's presence with us when we are looking for it, and maybe where it's hidden from us. There's two parts to this song, and I'm going to teach you both of them so we can sing it together. Part one. The holy way is reviving our souls. This path is making us wise. The holy way is rejoicing our hearts. Such sweet light for our eyes. Thinking, is he gonna ask us to dance? Maybe. <laughs> if you like, stand up. It's totally up to you. Or you can use your hands to dance a little bit, tap your feet, whatever it takes. Let's try this first part together. Ready? The holy way is reviving our souls. This path is making us wise. The holy way is rejoicing our hearts. Yeah. Such sweet light for our eyes. Now listen, let us write it on our hearts. Let us write it on our hearts. Oh, oh, oh. Let us write it on our hearts. Where we live always. Ready? Let us write it on our hearts. Let us write it on our hearts. Same thing. Let us ride it on our hearts. One more time, man. Let us ride it on our hearts. Where we live always. From the top. The holy way is reviving our souls. This path is making us wise. 
hearts Such sweet light for our eyes Let us write it on our hearts Let us write it on our hearts whoa, whoa. Let us write it on our hearts Where we live always One last time, here we go is reviving our souls This path is making us wise The holy way is rejoicing our hearts Such sweet light for our eyes Let us write it on our hearts Let us write it on our hearts Oh, oh let us write it on our hearts The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is the Lord's power limited? That's the question God asks of Moses when Moses doubts God is going to be able to provide enough meat to satisfy all 600,000 complaining people there in the wilderness. Are there enough flocks and herds to slaughter for them? Moses demands of God. Are there enough fish in the sea to catch for them? God's response is to ask a question in return. Is the Lord's power limited? It's striking to me that after all this time, Moses still doubts God's ability to keep God's promises, to provide what is needed. Just think about all the ways prior to this moment God has already showed up for Moses. His life was spared as an infant. He was the baby rescued from a basket in the river by Pharaoh's daughter. Because he was a Hebrew baby, by Pharaoh's command, he ought to have been drowned in the river. But instead, he lived and became a part of Pharaoh's own household. When Moses was grown, God appeared to him in a burning bush, calling Moses to rescue God's people from slavery in Egypt. Moses protested then too. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you. So God provides signs for Moses to employ, a staff that turns into a snake and back again into a staff, and Moses' own hand reaching into his cloak, turning from healthy to leprous, and back to health again. But I've never been eloquent, Moses continues to protest. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. 
So God provides once more, sending Aaron, Moses' brother, to accompany him and to be his mouth to speak for Moses to the people. In Egypt, God sends unimaginable plagues, works through Moses, parts the sea so the people can escape on dry land, sends a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day to lead the way to freedom. And still, in this wilderness moment, with people complaining all around him, Moses questions. God's ability to provide, to show up, to keep God's promise. During a time of struggle in my life, when I felt so distant from God, my spiritual director asked me, has God shown up for you before? Has God made the path clear for you in the past? And without hesitation, I said, yes, in powerful ways. Then you can trust God to show up now, she said. People of God, you can trust God to show up now. We're entering into a liminal time, that strange space between what has been and what will be. One pastor is leaving, and you don't know when another will come. Complaining might arise as an expression of grief, as a longing for what was. Leaders here, like Moses, might feel overwhelmed by all that is entrusted to their care during this interim time. It can be disorienting and frustrating to not know how long the unknown will last, to hear constantly about the shortage of pastors and wonder how long the wait might be. We might end up sounding a whole lot like Moses. There are so many churches without pastors. Are there enough pastors out there for all of them? Hear God's response. Is the Lord's power limited? People of God, you can trust God to show up for you just as God showed up and kept God's promise to those weeping, wandering, sad, frustrated people in the wilderness all those years ago. God saw what was needed and God provided abundantly food for hungry people and support for their weary leader. Is the Lord's power limited? Is God's spirit contained to one person, one pastor, one called and sent leader? Of course not. God tells Moses to gather 70 of the elders of Israel. And when they are gathered, God takes some of the spirit that is on Moses and puts it on them so that they might share in bearing the burden of the people. We are Pentecost people. God's spirit was poured out on you in baptism. And now we pray for God to stir up that spirit that dwells within you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in God's presence forever. You have everything you need to enter into this in-between time. God's spirit dwells in you. God is the one leading you forward. You are called and equipped to bear the burdens of God's people in this time and place together. God is here with you and for you, and God's power is limitless. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>